Roscoe, do you like video games? You do? Yeah, what do you like? What do you like to play? Round? I don't know round. Round? It's, it's pronounced M-O-R-P-G. Stuart K. Riley here. If you've never heard of me, I'm Stuart K. Riley. The last time we looked at an indie game, it was a retro 8-bit game based on an obscure console. This time we're looking at an obscure retro indie game that takes from a different timeline. We've seen the retro FPS Dusk take notes from Quake and the original Half-Life and Strafe, which takes a few ideas from a lot of the older old-school FPSs. So you've got people who who are nostalgic for 8-bit, 16-bit, and retro FPS games. But there's one era in video game history that you don't see many people doing. I'm talking about late 90s console games. Like the many people who are nostalgic for NES or Super NES, we're starting to see a lot of people who are nostalgic for stuff like N64, PlayStation 1, Dreamcast for goodness sake. Some really solid proof of this would be how good the Resident Evil 2 remake is doing. The ratings are off the freaking charts and everybody who loved the old game loves the new game. And a lot of people who haven't played the original want to play it now and people are hungry for that nostalgia one good example look at their steam store and see all of this retro shit that you can buy as dlc i mean we've got ps1 character models we've got the original playstation 1 soundtrack and sound effects we already know nostalgia sells right but now what we considered new is old now and what is old is retro and nostalgic so metal gear solid and resident evil could easily be called a retro game. Now that I'm through spilling all that bullshit out, how about I actually introduce you to the fucking game of the day? This game is something that I just described. It's a retro game that is styled like the late 90s era of video games, or as they call it, low poly graphics. Created by a little Norwegian known as Fredrik Strum, and his development studio, Retro Dungeon. This game is currently on Kickstarter with about a month left and is already $4,000 of its $5,000 goal. It's not done, but there's a demo available and we're gonna play it. Y'all, this is Combustion. Combustion is a game set in the futuristic year of 1997. Somewhere in an undisclosed location, there exists a mass of oil rigs all tied together. These oil rigs make up the city of Noroon, and like any city, it has a police force that tries to keep crime to a minimum. And that leads us to our main character, Calico, a police officer also known as PC-31. In Combustion, we help him kick crime in the butt. But we don't just kill enemies. We can, but we're encouraged to take them out with non-lethal force and arrest them. No doubt as the game progresses and develops more and more, we'll see more reason to incapacitate and arrest other than kill enemies. But right now, it seems like the only thing that's different is you get extra experience points. Yeah, this game has an RPG system. I liken the system to Symphony of the Night, where instead of doing turn-based battle, you get experience on the fly. To do all this police work, no, you don't get a gun. You get a baton, but not just any baton. It's the new 1997 Ajax Symphonix Police Red Stabber. I can't lie to y'all, I made that up. It should be a thing in the game though. Frederick, make that DLC, please. The baton has a few neat tricks you can do with it, but the coolest one of all is the lasso, where you can lasso somebody up and then tase them with the baton. Just like if Simon Belmont learned Thunderbolt. So what do we do as Calico in our time in Norun other than arrest people? Well, we give somebody fucking CPR. Hey, didn't you have to do that in the Walking Dead game? That was a cool death. Gameplay footage, uh, guys, I, look at these graphics, man. Look at that lighting. Look at the atmosphere of this freaking game, okay? Soak it in like the rain falling on Calico's head. To be based around old school graphics, this is a beautiful game. So many little particle effects and little cloud of, and smoke effects and all that good stuff. It's just gorgeous. 
these graphics just give me this overall feeling like I'm playing Silent Hill 1 or Metal Gear Solid or how about a weird one, Dino Crisis. And I love how oversaturated all the colors are. Everything just pops out at you, even the little Soliton radar at the top right. As you could tell, I just spent so much time just looking at this game, getting in first person view and just fucking around looking at everything, seeing what all I could find. And it was during all that that I met my first enemy of the game. Okay, that red screen wipe is a reference to something, I'm pretty sure, but I can't think of what it is. Now, if you just want to kill him, you can just whack him a couple times with a baton and it's all over. But if you want to arrest him, you got to get a little trickier with it. He's got a separate stamina meter. You gotta try to get down before his life goes down. And when you do that, he'll fall down and you can put cuffs on him. Book him, Calico. In the next scene, we see Calico get rid of his little raincoat and we see his Leon S. Kennedy style get up. <laughs> Okay, it doesn't do that. And then next we get our first code to radio call where we meet our next character, Mr. Brindle. He's a dog. My God, this game is beautiful. Look at the graphics, they're awesome. Do you know any more games where you can confiscate sushi? No, you don't. Here we find our first NPC of the game, an otter named Otter. Oh, never mind, it's Endrick. Apparently, Endrick is the one who sent the distress signal, which brought Calico over here in the first place. And to get to the next door, we need to get a key card. And we gotta go to that computer over there to the right to do that. Now, what is this? Dance.gif? Let's see. There is important work being conducted at this oil rig. Feed the poor with the rich. I guess that makes a new meaning to eat the rich. Or maybe that is what it means and I've been listening to the Motorhead song too much. Let me give this bad boy an amazing tasing. When you get to jail, tell him the cat sent you. Okay, I'm liking this way too much. Oi, let's see what's on the telly then. Tonight on another gripping episode of Are We Animals? This guy says no. This guy says yes. This guy says it doesn't matter. And this guy says I want some peanuts. Nuts. Look at the graphics, they're awesome! Second floor, and here's Fleur. Also, props for the Liquid Snake trench coat. Don't mind me, just a little police brutality caught on camera. Wolverines! Remember when I said you had to do CPR on somebody? I wasn't kidding. In this game, you can expect to have to save civilians. You know, protect, serve, you know, the whole cop thing. What is this, Rescue 911, the game? This series is dedicated to the men and women who risk everything to save the life of a stranger. I'm William Shack. Join us again next week for more true stories on Rescue 911. Station, this is PC-31. Apprehended a suspect and confiscated a pizza. Send back up in the crime lab over here. Sir? Uh, not sure how that's relevant to the case, but it's barbecue and pineapple. Maximum Berg is best Berg. Hey, what's this, an arcade machine? Oh my god, I think this is a real game. Yep, I looked it up. Supersonic Tank Cats, that's on Steam. Well, we're getting close to the final bits of the demo. The last little portions of the game. Now, what is beyond this door? What evils could lurk beyond? You're just gonna have to play Combustion and find out. I'm gonna leave this portion for y'all. Aside from the main game, there's also a VR training stage which has three levels you can go through that introduce you to the game, and it's very MGS1 inspired. You get to learn all the little tricks you can do throughout the game, like the jumps and the rolls, the jump and roll, whatever the hell this thing is. Either way, you get to jump through freaking lasers. I'm gonna beat up this target with my kick ass police baton, snare, sna not snare, tase. Tase and, yeah, sure, tase and snare, beat and switch, bait and switch, rip and tear, ri Um... I win? This is where I should mention it's a very small development team making this, and it's in Unity. Which, despite having lots of potential, has a big stigma about it. And this game, when I first got it, had its share of glitches. Honestly, throughout my whole gameplay on this build, this is the first time I've encountered a glitch. But we've gotta cut Frederick some slack. He's just about the only person working on this game. Although he has a soundtrack composer and a tester, apparently. But for the most part, the game has run with no problems on the newest build. So, now that I've shown you 
combustion. I've shown you the gameplay. I've told you the story. I've told you what to expect from it. Since it's just a demo and it's not a full game yet, here's what I would like to see in combustion. Instead of having DLC material, have unlockable material. Like things you unlock from doing things in the game, just like you used to back in the old days. Be an awesome player and get cool stuff, you know. What kind of things? Well, how about new moves you can do with the baton? Maybe increase taser power? Movement speed? For real, Calico walks like a fucking snail. Number two of what I'd like to see, cheat codes, like real deal cheat codes. Up, down, left, right, L1, L2, R1, R2, circle, square, you know. Or if failing that, cheats you can unlock after you beat the game one time or something. I'd like to see a little bit more variety in the moves that Calico can do. I'd like to see not just a somersault, but I'd like to see a full-on jump, maybe a sprint button, more baton moves. Now, one could argue that the lack of moves could be just the idea of keeping it simple. And if that's the case, well, that's cool too. One thing I didn't mention that's in the game is this little selection screen. It asks you if you smoke, and it also asks you what political party you voted for. And there's like four or five of them, and you could even choose not to vote. So far, it doesn't seem to change the game in any way, but it might in the future. So we're at the ass end of the video. What's my thoughts? Okay, Combustion has a lot of potential to be a great game if it's completed. If it's completed, I want to make that completely clear. This is a very early, early release demo of what the game is actually going to be. It's actually, according to Frederick, going to be very big, very nice, and all that good stuff. I really hope that he's able to get it done. I hope he gets more people on his development team other than him, a musician, and that's about it. <laughs> Roscoe, what's your review of the game? Roscoe says that the addition of the PS4 controller support is a welcome addition to the game. As most people are not wanting to use a keyboard and mouse for these type of retro games, they normally want to use a controller. And mice make his carpal tunnel act up. Well that's it, the review's over. And did you notice that I went through this whole review about furry cops in a video game and I did not once make a Zootopia joke. One, because I don't go for low-hanging fruit, and two, Zootopia is not a joke. Well, it looks like this review is going to be about half as long as what my reviews normally are. So, um, I got a question for you guys. Would y'all rather I make shorter videos? Do y'all like the more lengthy and detailed videos, or do you like it short and to the point? Y'all tell me in the comments below. I want to know. Y'all give me enough comments, I'll be asking more questions. Try to get some uh, audience participation going on here. Hit me up on Twitter. Throw me money at coffee. K-O-F-I. You throw me money, I buy games, and I review them for you. Now y'all get out of here. My head hurts from listening to myself talk.